great. Hey, guys. I want to introduce you to some very, very important people here. Um, I had mentioned some of these folks earlier today, um, but this is probably one of the most important panels of this entire conference. So these guys are, um, are, re are state advocacy representatives led by Ms. Terry Haverly. So she keeps these guys in check. Her military background is really handy in this case. Um, so we have Terry Haverly in the middle, Bill Carson and Harlan Balance from the great state of Texas. We have a lot of Texans here today. We have Nick Aramino from the great state of Florida, my home. And John Whalen actually represents several states, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois and Michigan. Illinois and Michigan. Lord. So they're going to talk about um, really advocating our advocates, or excuse me, activating our advocates. They're going to really share some really, I've seen their, their presentation, there's some really funny stuff in here too. So you're going to really enjoy it, um, and uh, take it away, guys. Thank you, Jennifer. So just imagine that you've convinced your bosses that you have something important to say at the national conference and they agree to give you a time slot. The agenda comes out, and you realize just how special your group really is, because the opener for your act has been an Olympian, DC insider, lobbyist, economist, Donald Trump Jr., news correspondence, leadership, and you're like, wow, we are now here for the most important, anticipated part of the entire conference, because they were all our openers. Waiting on a <laughs> and here we are, and we are here to have a good time, because we feel that a good time produces a good memory, and that helps you do what's next. Now, all day long, you've heard Bill Carson <laughs> knock it off. Kindergarten cop. <laughs> so we know all day long we've been hearing the what and the why, and now here, right now, we're here to tell you the how, how we work things at our offices and out in the states. These gentlemen are our state advocacy reps, and they're going to take you on a journey down memory lane to remind you of your duties as a delegate and as a chapter leader, and to give you some tips as we grow into the future. As the manager of the Advocacy Support Division, I have the privilege to provide them support and to problem solve. I hold orientations and refreshers for advocates, so if you think you know, need that, or if you think you know somebody who needs a refresher, email me. I also hope that you all have met Claudia and Holly as you were checking in, because marketing the events that we are going to be discussing today are handled primarily in our office by those two. Now, they're therapists, editors, brainstormers, mind readers, calendar masters, troubleshooters, and avid conservatives every darn day. <laughs> so these uh, reps here are active in these states, as um, Jennifer mentioned, and their role is to train, motivate, mentor, and support you. If you didn't live in one of those states, basically you're stuck with me virtually as your state advocacy rep. And I just want to look, hmm, there's four of you for seven states, one of me for 43. I get it, I get it. But also, don't worry, I took a picture of Jennifer's slide where she said that we're going to be hiring more state advocacy reps, so I got you on paper. Anyhow, they activate you activists as you are working to build your chapters, as you develop connections with your elected officials. So first up is going to be John Whalen. So we have a man who is world famous in certain parts of the country. Maybe the county, maybe his precinct. But it's John Whalen from the upper Midwest states to talk about the delegate program. There Thank you. Go, John. you. Thank you very much, and uh, I am from Rochester, Minnesota, home of the world-famous Mayo <laughs> Clinic. Uh, I was pre precinct chair, so my precinct people know me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the delegate program was the initial 
kickoff of grassroots advocacy uh, by AMAC and Dan Weber, our founder, and Andy Mangione uh, kicked that program off 10 years ago. So we're just celebrating 10 years of the delegate program. And who in the room has been with us those whole 10 years? I can't see anything except bright lights. <laughs> I see a couple hands. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. So this year we just went through our first redistricting. And uh, in some states that was very, very interesting. Uh, particularly uh, Michigan, I just did an analysis there. We have 11 advocates in Michigan and most of them, the vast majority of them, uh, changed districts. Uh, Illinois was kind of challenging a little bit there. Dr. Roy, right? Dr. Roy got redistricted and uh, some of my other states were, were not quite as wild. But um, I just wanted to mention the uh, delegate program and our big anniversary this year. And then, uh, on, kind of on a personal note, uh, I've been doing some uh, congressional office visits on my own uh, in districts where we don't have a delegate or where it didn't work into that delegate schedule. Just gave you a couple examples here. It's always fun as you get older, you know, you're on Medicare, and then you're interacting with these young people in their 20s. And so here, here's a couple of them uh, at Ashley Hinson's uh, Iowa 1st Congressional District, which is just slightly south of where I live, just over the border. And a uh, couple of great young people here, Christina McBurney, who had a background as a uh, youth pastor for several years and got to know the Congresswoman through her church, and then uh, she was recruited. And then Andy Whiting, who has a political science uh, degree out of Pensacola College in, uh, in the Panhandle of Florida. And uh, it was really fun uh, meeting with those two. Uh, keep that name in mind, Representative Ashley Hinson. I think she is going to be a real future star. She was just a, uh, a freshman uh, elected in 2020. And she has done a lot of bipartisan uh, legislation. She's figured out a way to work with these uh, Democrats, and she's gotten some things done. And uh, be on the lookout for her. Uh, now I've got kind of a bittersweet uh, slide here. Uh, this is my, was my personal congressman who's standing, I think he's playing with his phone a little bit there, he's multitasking as he's taking a call and addressing a group. Our delegate is in the white shirt, uh, seated across from Representative Jim Hagedorn, uh, and uh, that's Delegate uh, Tom Schleck, who's uh, been with us a, very, uh, a real long time, since before I came with AMAC. And this is a meet and greet event, which is held at a, we held this at a buffet restaurant where they had a free uh, room, a uh, dedicated room. So it was a really nice, uh, anyone ever heard of Pizza Ranch? That's a, no, that's a Midwest phenomenon. And it's called Pizza Ranch, but they have the best chicken around. So <laughs> uh, I don't know what that's all about. But Representative Hagedorn died in mid-February. He had stage four uh, kidney cancer for three years. The Mayo Clinic uh, kept him alive for those three years, uh, but he did uh, pass away. And the other picture there is me presenting the AMAC Patriot Award to his widow. Uh, he married a, a Korean gal. She's got a great life story. She was left on a doorstep in South Korea, and uh, she was put into an orphanage, and then a couple conservative Minnesotans adopted her. And uh, she grew up in Minnesota and ended up becoming uh, chair of the Republican Party, and then she married uh, a Representative Hagedorn. She's also running for his seat right now. We had a big free-for-all, um, and Harlan and Bill are going to talk about events, uh, but I did have a candidate forum. Uh, we had seven candidates for the Republican nomination to succeed Representative Hagedorn. If, the primary is coming slide, up on... 
Tuesday. It, yes. it, it will be in our slides. You can talk yeah. about it then. Oh, okay. Well, you can make that decision. Okay. Just did. Okay. All right. So um, this, this is an example of, a, of another meet and greet that we had uh, with two representatives in Minnesota 6 and Minnesota 8. And I just wanted to highlight Keith Kiefer who's going to be making a main platform presentation tomorrow at 1.30. Uh, Keith is an atomic veteran. He's going to have a very interesting uh, talk to give. He's seated over in that direction. So make sure you hear Keith. He's right there with the white hair uh, in this picture, and he's standing next to a congressman. Uh, we had 50 people in a room for that uh, meeting. That's kind of an inside joke. Um, <laughs> And we have a real rock star delegate, uh, Kerry Reeder in Tennessee One. Wanted to put a couple slides in with him. Uh, and here he is meeting with Marsha Blackburn, uh, the senator from Tennessee, and with her field director, Chelsea Ivins. And on the right hand picture, uh, Kerry's got all these female politicians that he's meeting with. And so uh, he gets these good photo ops. His uh, congresswoman is Diana Harshbarger. We did make a mistake on that picture, and I want to correct the record. Uh, the man on the other side carries on the left of uh, the congresswoman, and the other side is Representative Mark Green uh, from Tennessee 7. So uh, we got that a little bit goofed up. So I um, wanted to just mention one other thing. These, these are the kinds of activities that we I uh, want to have our delegates get engaged in, that you're meeting with the congressional offices, as I showed with those staffers, uh, that you're meeting directly with the congressman uh, and, or woman and senator. And if you need any help in tracking down, I showed you those young people on the first slide, and there's often a lot of turnover with the staff. So we have access to the latest uh, information on who the staffers are and just, um, who would be the best person to email on that? Because just go ahead and start the email with me, and then I'll get it to Claudia the, Holly. Ter Terry will, depends on what you're working. Terry on. will get it to who it needs to go to if you're trying to track down a staffer uh, to try to get some action. The last thing I'll say here is this is my delegate in Minnesota's second district, and what I, the message I wanted to. Uh, convey here is interacting with other senior groups. And I know a lot of you are doing that right now, but you'll notice he's standing next to a banner for the Republican Seniors of Minnesota. And so we got interacting with that group. They have over 600 members, and their typical uh, meeting, uh, they draw over 150. And during this political season, they've been having one politician after another come in. So it's a way that, in a very simple way, we can get right to the politician uh, in a friendly setting, and then we set up meet and greet opportunities with them, and uh, you know just get a relationship going with them in a very friendly atmosphere. So I, if you're not doing that already, I would encourage you uh, to do that with local conservative groups. So I'm going to turn it over to, to one Nick. More, one more er, did I have one more slide? Oh, I had one more slide. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I can't forget this one. OK, so this is probably the greatest photo opportunity that we've had with an advocate that I'm aware of. This is in the red jacket is Governor Kim Reynolds in Iowa. And you may recall that she gave the rebuttal speech to uh, President Biden's State of the Union which is very bad, bad State of the Union. Elder abuse. Uh, she gave a great uh, rebuttal speech to that, and our delegate's wife, Mary Jo Smith, our delegate in the Des Moines area of Iowa, uh, Ken Smith, his wife, Mary Jo, uh, went to that live, the, the delivery of that speech by Governor Reynolds, and then look at that uh, photo op with the hug uh, with the governor. So. That's what we want our delegates to do, <laughs> getting together with politicians like that. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for reminding yeah, thank See, you. that's why Terry's my boss. She said, <laughs> I said, this was the highlight of my program, and I forgot about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, John. That's a thank great you. slide to um, end the delegate portion. So next up is Nick from Florida to focus on chapter leaders. He takes his advice from Florida alligators, 
by basking in the sun, <laughs> keeping an eye out for opportunities, being thick-skinned, and never afraid to open his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. <laughs> oh, I'm <gonna> <laughs> It's a roast. You notice that everyone else, they mic'd up, they put a silencer on <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Oh, <laughs> there's my best slide. I'm done now. <laughs> well, when we get chapters started, and when I came on board with AMAC in November of 20, uh, right after the uh, non-election of Biden, uh, we did not have any active chapters in Florida at that time. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy to say now we have seven active chapters meeting every other month. That's great. And I have got a team of chapter leaders and delegates in Florida that I am, all kidding aside, really, really proud of. Uh, when we go to open a new chapter, we never quite know what's gonna happen. In fact, the very first chapter meeting I went to People were streaming in. This was in Fort Myers with Nancy Stamp and uh, their first meeting. And the people came in and we saw the large crowd. We weren't sure we were going to fit them all in the room. And one of the guys said to me, we weren't quite sure what to expect. I said, well, join the club. Neither were we. We didn't know if there were going to be two of you or 200. We had no idea what to expect. So we, we start a new chapter. And this is kind of what we're looking for. We hope we'll, they'll be out there as far as the eye can see and they'll be, they'll be pouring in. And we do know that when they pour in, which in most cases they do, uh, at least to, a, to an extent, uh, they're revved up, they're ready to go, they're mad. They're mad about what they've seen going on around them. But then again, there are other new chapters and we're not quite sure why it happens this way. We take a similar situation, exactly the same promotion for the first meeting and we might get a little bit of a smaller crowd. Uh, I've been to chapter meetings. I mentioned Nancy down in Florida 19, Fort Myers, Naples. Place was bursting at the steams. I went at the seams. Uh, went to uh, Miami Beach with the dynamic husband and wife team. At, two terrific people over here. Uh, and that's Doug Ross and his wife Haley. They're now the delegate and the chapter leader. And we had four people. But you know what? Doesn't matter. Uh, because it's not where you start, it's where you finish. And these people are dedicated and working really hard, and it's building. And it's building across the state and across America. Now we can do in person meetings, <laughs> or we do online meetings. Oh, my. We are finding that uh, the online meetings are not as popular as we'd like them to be, even the hybrid meetings. So we've kind of reached the point where we much rather have them either all, all in person if possible. Uh, the hybrid meeting, we go through a lot of hieroglyphics and a lot of work and a lot of disappointment when the equipment doesn't work right mm -hmm. and we end up only having three or four people. So um, we really push more for, for strictly uh, in-person attendance. We have had some great speakers uh, and we do find obviously that the topic and the speaker are usually the primary driving force to how many people you'll be able to attract to the meeting. Here Nancy had uh, Erica Donalds. Erica Donalds, very successful businesswoman in her own right and she is also the wife of Congressman Byron Donalds uh, in Florida 19 has made a lot of waves nationally. Uh, again, great turnouts uh, down there in Florida 19, and we're gonna build that same type of following uh, all throughout the country. Um, some of the things obviously that affect attendance uh, can be the day of the week that you hold the meeting. We find out sometimes that Wednesday night in our area, for example, is church night. It's not a good night to hold a meeting. Um, but sometimes it can't be avoided. Other conservative organizations in your area, what nights are they holding meetings? You want to avoid getting on the same schedule that they're on. Uh, and also, of course, the location, where you're having the meeting, both in terms of where it is, the surrounding area, and just the overall appeal. 
The first meeting in 19 was at the, Republic, the county Republican headquarters. People were familiar with it. They were comfortable. They showed up. Uh, so we've had to move meetings in some areas and find that when we go to a different venue, we have better success. Uh, fortunately, our people excel. Uh, I really believe our, one of the things that when times are tough in this business and sometimes we run into to difficulties, I'm encouraged by the quality of the people that I work with out in the field. The advocates that I have in Florida, their enthusiasm, their drive, and their determination. So as uh, we were reminded several times this afternoon, just keep pushing forward, keep fighting the good fight, we're going to win. In the, in the long run, we are going to win. I wouldn't say that if I didn't believe it. <laughs> I wouldn't be here. Uh, I really do believe that we are going to win. So find a good facility, identify a great speaker and a great topic. Uh, Brevard County Sheriff Wayne Ivey is a big draw. He's a no-nonsense, tough, conservative sheriff, and he always draws a big crowd. The primary purpose, and this is very important, we found that people to understand when new chapters are formed for the chapter members to understand the primary purpose of the chapter is to educate AMAC members and their guests. So we want to choose speakers and issues that are hot nationally, statewide, or locally. We want to share those experiences with other advocates. Uh, Bob Carlstrom mentioned earlier, hey, you've got friends out there that are Democrats. As Ronald Reagan said, I didn't leave the Democratic Party, it left me. <laughs> I felt the same way. My bet is most of you felt the same way. And we've got friends on, and relatives out there. The Democratic Party is leaving them as well now. Might have taken a little longer, but it's leaving them as well. We want to be educated so we can go back out in the community, children, grandchildren, and friends, and give out true information because they're not hearing the truth elsewhere. So we are a source of real information. It's, that, I think, is just extremely important. Some people have come to meetings, I think, sometimes I think they come thinking we're going to storm the Bastille afterwards. <laughs> I looked into it, it's already been done. <laughs> So, we're not going to repeat that. So, to wrap things up on the chapter, I want you to know we've done some research and found that the left <laughs> is forming a counter-organization. <laughs> They're busy at work trying to put, we've become so powerful and such a threat that they have now formed, well, it's actually pronounced a mess. A mess. <laughs> The Association of Misguided American Socialists. <laughs> They're putting a lot of effort into it. They've brought out the heavyweights. Well, it's AMS or welcome to the grand delusion. <laughs> and if you understand that title or the fact that there's two titles there, you might have the theme to Rocky and Bullwinkle <laughs> playing in your head right now. If you do, you're right on target, <laughs> because there's the chapter leaders and the delegate for the first chapter of a mess. <laughs> we have Boris Bad Enough, Natasha, and Fearless Leader, <laughs> and they're putting together their team. <laughs> Ma Barker, former Floridian, unfortunately, <laughs> and of course my buddy Big Al. <laughs> John Whalen did spot them up in Frostbite Falls yeah. about a week ago, John, I think it was, right? Looking for a venue for the first chapter meeting, but they've decided to move to a little warmer area. Tiki, tiki. Part of their chapter members includes the Wild Bunch, with Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and their band of renown. However, a lot of their chapter members are normally detained. <laughs> so they're not always able to get there on time. Fortunately, with a lot of time spent, uh, things, the water reaches its own level, and the final results are in. Oh, my. And this appears to be the end of a mess. <laughs> Didn't last long. 
<laughs> Thanks, and if you want to talk to us some more about chapters, <laughs> join, us in, join us in the learning hub. Wonderful, Nick. Thank you so much for that enlightenment. We that. Yes, and now to delight us, that. now to delight us with tall tales from the Republic of Texas, are our most famous outlaws of the Wild West, Bill the Kid Carson, and Harlan Holiday Bounds. <laughs> <laughs> now I've been trying to convince them that there are other states other than just Texas, nah. but I I'm afraid I can't get very far, but do your best. Do my best. best. <laughs> Go Good ahead. grief. All right. I gotta use a teleprompter. Okay, so they gave us 20 minutes. We're not gonna take that much time. In the interim, I would like to regale you with a short story. Are you ready? These words were written at a time when kings ruled. These words were written when everyday people were brand new awakening to a brand new way of thinking. It was the time of kings. It was the time of man. It was a time when every man was about to become a sovereign. You're not moving. It was a time when every man was to become a sovereign. The story is about the change from the rule of man to the rule of law. The story of 52 words that changed the course of man. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty. to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Hey. So after that introduction from Terry, I'm just going to say, I'm Bill Carson. I am a longtime resident of Texas. In fact, this 4th of July, I will have been in the state for 40 years. Uh, here's a shout out to my home state, Michigan folks, though, y'all. <laughs> I've been a 30 year plus political grassroots activist for uh, starting with the Ross Perot campaign through the Tea Party wave and all that time with my local GOP. Uh, we have, uh, I have allowed considerable time working at every single election at the precinct and the county level. Currently, I hold the post of presiding judge at the Central Counting Station on election night, and I am the presiding judge of the absentee ballot board, so I see every single mail-in ballot in my county uh, as well. Connie and I married young. We have two kids, four grandkids, and one great-granddaughter, so we have plenty of posterity to work for. <laughs> and here's Harlan. Good afternoon. For all those that do not know me, my name is Harlan Bounds. I am born and bred Texan. <laughs> I've never been to Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Although I would like to visit Hillsdale College, <laughs> but only in the summertime. <laughs> I met Bill Carson 12 years ago working on the resolutions committee of our county. <clears throat> We soon became best of friends, traveling the state, picking on our elected officials. We do not discriminate against any candidate. We have had lunch interviews with local and district judges, state and federal senators, state and federal House of Representatives. I'm a longtime activist, one of the founders of the Ellis County Tea Party. I'm a precinct chair in my county. I work most elections as election judge. I have worked on the ballot board in my county. <coughs> Working the election is something very important we should all do. We can all work the elections in some way. We all like to complain about the election integrity, but refuse to find the time to get involved. More importantly, I am married with four kids five, soon to be six grandchildren, 
2 to 21. <laughs> so we, our job here is to activate y'all to go back home and do something. Our mission statement that we've created, well, I've created, John makes fun of it, is to get 50 people in a room. Oh, yeah. our, our, our chapter meetings, our meet and greets, our public forums, the, the, the value of that is to get a bunch of people in the room. Uh, so the scope of that is this room. I want all y'all to know that, that we are your resource. We are, are here for you to help you do that. We want you to get the 50 people in a room. And uh, I wrote a scope, the, a, conservative message, a conservative message and method for grassroots AMAC action advocates to share with chapters, to bring together like-minded AMAC members for camaraderie and to, inform, and to inform the issues of the day. Chapters are local though. The, 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 chap, the delegate is basically connected to the congressional office or the political offices, but the chapter is local issues. Whatever, whatever the local issue is in your state, in your district, in your chapter is what's key and important to y'all. We got to have a, a message from the national. It, it could take five minutes and then you bring your dog catcher in and let him talk to the people if he's elected. Right there. I look, yeah, I yeah. look forward to getting to know each of you. Come by the learning hub and let's talk. There's much to do and it does involve each of you to get it done. <laughs> yeah. Now we're going to talk about what the, the event, uh, the meet and greet. Uh, one of the primary purposes of the AMAC Action Delegate is to arrange a, a congressional meet and greet. The opportunity for both the representative and the AMAC members to get to know each other is very valuable to a growing relationship. Here's a couple on the pictures. Is a couple of our Texas examples. We got a picture of Representative Lance Gordon, Lance Gooden. He is a good one. Yeah. With Delegate Bob Reese at the Farm Bureau Arena part of uh, his office. The Congressional office is in a complex that has the Farm Bureau, and, and the arena part is like a conference room. So he gets to use that, and the, and the congressman said, we can set that up. So that's. That's one choice. Uh, the next one is a representative, Van Taylor, in a church with the advocate, Ellen Layer. She set that up, uh, meet and greet with uh, Van Taylor in about, uh, she was on the volunteer clock for about six weeks and she had him in the room. Uh, it it might have been eight or nine weeks, but she got the representative in the room immediately. Uh, I wondered sometimes whether she was pushing too hard, Ellen, but uh, she, she's wonderful. Uh, the third picture, the second picture is Van Taylor at the church. The third picture is uh, Jake Elsey, and if you look real close, you can see Harlan slouching in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier that same day, we had the same representative in my Navarro County GOP headquarters. We had our congressman, our congressman, two times in one day, and uh, two different towns and two different times, obviously, physics and all. But uh, if, if you have a big district and if you can work with that representative, they, they will. Jake is a personal friend of ours, so we make him. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Kevin McCarthy makes him do stuff. Okay. <laughs> Venues to look to meet, venues to look to, to meet and greet with your critter. You go to the church, you go to the library, you go to the senior centers, you go to the local civic center. Turn that cell phone off. <laughs> you go to 50 plus communities, there's a lot of them around, and they got meeting rooms. Uh, so you go to the 50 plus communities meeting rooms, and definitely, always, always ask the congressional staff if they have any advice. There's security issues for the critter, and, and they know that, and they will help you make sure you don't make a mistake 
they won't let him go to some places, so ask them for help. These facilities will range from free. Can you do JJ? Can you do JJ Walker? No. <laughs> to way too much. <laughs> we encourage the pass the hat method to make up any differences that, that you incur, and AMAC will reimburse up to $150 for a meet and greet with an actual congressional representative, not, not candidates. And, but uh, so. Now you go to the next, there you go. You For those of you north of the Mason-Dixon line, a critter is a congressman. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say we needed to Nick and that. I had to learn that. Fine, <laughs> fine, fine, I will say it. It is, non, it is, new, it is gender neutral, <laughs> and it is an endearment. Okay. <laughs> and most of them love it. Okay. it uh, available then, you examples. As you can see in the picture, community centers, uh, restaurants, churches, uh, and uh, I guess the rest of them are churches. Uh, you can also find libraries uh, that'll have, let you have meetings, hotel meeting rooms, and local be meeting rooms. It's kind of sort of if one of your members is a business owner or something and they have a facility that you can use and they'll let you use, let them volunteer that. Uh, okay. okay. He says get going. Okay. Nonpartisan candidate forum is uh, another way, another great way to introduce AMAC action members to want to be politicians and serious candidates. We believe the best relationship with an elected public servant is to get to know them before they are elected. Our constitutional values will go a long way to influence their decisions long into the future. Our preferred format, this is Harlan and me, our preferred format it, for a candidate forum is to allow the venue a lot of time to have one-on-one -on -one with anybody that wants to talk to them, and then we put them on a stage to, to, to stand and deliver. So uh, that it, it takes quite a bit of time out of the politician's day, but they get to see 100 people or 200 people. They, they're generally going to be there. So the, okay. the picture on the left is John Whalen's uh, meet and greet, no, candidate, candidate forum. forum. Congressional. Uh, and we're, we're missing a person. She's hidden off to the right. Um, and that's in Minnesota. Uh, oh, one. Mm -hmm. The other one is our uh, meet and greet, and it ran by Troy and Rosa Rattery, uh, and Jennifer flew to Texas uh, to help us with that event. It was a great event. So those are your four state advocacy reps. Uh, just remember, folks, I just introduced them. I don't guarantee them. <laughs> but they are all... I'm still under warranty. They are all <laughs> true patriots, and they really are working hard for you. Trust me, I get emails, texts, Teams messages, 6 o'clock in the morning, weekends, uh, evenings, everything, trying to solve problems and issues for you all. So I, trust me, they are working to solve issues and make things work for you all. Um, but we've shared our expertise, so now we want to get a little bit of inspiring advice from those who are actually doing the volunteer experience. And um, if Annette LeBaron would step up here. I'd like to just interject that uh, the ones coming up are from my territory. <laughs> Michigan and Illinois. Okay. <laughs> so thank you. Um, my name is Annette LeBaron. I come from Michigan, uh, the second largest um, populous county in Michigan, which is Oakland County, and unfortunately it's blue. So not having a lot of fun, but we're doing our best where we are. I am a chapter leader, and I've been for about 15 months or so. So the perspective I'm going to give to you today is from being a chapter leader. So from that, I brought my own teleprompter, by the way. I hope you guys don't <laughs> mind. Um, one is to provide a product people want. And what I mean by that is people really want to make a difference. They want to come. They're excited. They want to make change. 
uh, not Obama's change, but our type of change, right? Uh, AMAC's type of change. And I want to make sure that the experience they have with me is a good one because they're going to go elsewhere if not. There are so many organizations that have come about that recently started in my area, and it's amazing. And so I want people to come back. I believe in AMAC. I believe in all the things that are done by this organization. And I want to make sure that um, they keep coming back. So one of, the, one of the examples that I have is that um, in addition to informing them when they're at one of my meetings, I want to make sure there's some sort of action that they can take. So for example, um, we have a petition going around in Michigan right now. It's called Secure My Vote. And you guys can only imagine that we want voter ID. And there's a number of other things in that petition that we're asking for. So one thing that I will do is um, an action item is I will bring the petition and ask people to sign. And or I'll bring a stack of blank petitions and ask people to take them with them to get family and friends. And I make sure they feel comfortable getting signatures by telling them a summary about what's in this bill exactly or what is in this petition, and then on the flip side, how to fill out the form, right? So they have some confidence level with that. And then if, for those that really want to be active, I say, come on out and stand out. Harlan, you might want to join us here. 20 degree temperature with a big sign that says, stop your car and sign my petition here, because that's exactly what I did. And I would never ask my members to do something that I wouldn't be willing to do myself, right? So please come up. I'll call you when it's a nice cold <laughs> winter day. Um, and real quickly, the other things I want to say is be professional and organized. It's the little things that make a difference. You know, having name tags. Um, um, I even put table decorations out. It's a little corny, I know. But having AMAC material, a sign-in sheet, etc. cetera. Um, I greet them at the door. I start my meetings on time. I end on time. I have an agenda. Um, I tell them about other important events that are going on in the area uh, that they might be interested in. And so I think those, and I make sure too when I have a speaker that I practice my presentation and, and introduce them appropriately and follow up on time. Um, one of the things that I know is really hard, and I would agree, is finding a meeting room, a very difficult part. One of the tricks that I do is I meet on a Saturday. We have a private room in a restaurant, and it's two hours long from 10 a.m. to 12. And the first half an hour is networking, socializing, and eating. And the restaurant's happy because they have a room full of people paying customers. And I tell people, if you want to buy a coffee, just buy a coffee. If you want a full breakfast, buy a full breakfast. And that satisfies the restaurant. Tip your waitress. Yes, they're ha and I t yes, tip them well, absolutely. And then the second half is the, really the meeting uh, that we have. So in the last two things, real quickly, uh, meet consistently. Um, too much time in between meetings, uh, people start fading away. And the last thing is be enthusiastic. You know, the enthusiasm that you bring to the meeting is, you know, um, you, you set the tone of the meeting. And so those are the things that work for me. So thank you for this time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Annette. Thank you. And, and Annette is enthusiastic, and that's why we've asked her. And while the clerks are getting ready, Greg Ostergren, um, is a delegate in Florida who at the last minute was unable to attend. But he's been a delegate since um, 2017, and he's had numerous meetings with Congressman Bill Arrakis and his staff. His two pieces of advice are, first, as a delegate, build a rapport with the staffers of your Definitely. congressman or congresswoman's office, and always be respectful of their time. Because just remember the motto that less is more. There are hundreds of organizations and thousands of people that want the congressman's ears. You know what? And trust me, I get that. Because today, guys, I've been trying to talk to y'all. <laughs> but I'm sorry. Sometimes I just have to walk away. Because everybody's <laughs> wanting everybody's ear. So I get it as a congressman. They're just trying to be, um, you know, trying to listen to you. But just be respectful, short on time with them. Um, so now I'll let the clerks, but I did want to get that in for Greg since he wasn't able to attend. Hello. It's uh, nice to see everyone. We're happy to be here. Mike and I are from southern Illinois. It's pretty rural conservative. <laughs> um, love living there, don't like the government so much. Um, we've only had our second uh, chapter meeting, but already I've learned I have to be really flexible. The members who came to the first meeting, 
they said, we don't want to hear you. We want speakers to come in. So I was so proud of myself for the second meeting. I had an attorney come in who was really instrumental in getting our businesses open under Governor Pritzker's uh, lockdowns. And so I was just so excited. I talked to him personally. He was gonna come to our second meeting, woo! And then at the last minute, the day before the meeting, he canceled. So I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? So I went to the AMAC resource section and I learned all about the Electoral College. I made new PowerPoint slides, I was all ready to go. And then I had to email all of our members saying, I'm sorry, Mr. DeVore cannot come, but this is what I'm gonna talk about. So we get to the meeting, we start the meeting, and all the members just really wanted to talk and network. So I let that come to its natural conclusion, and guess what? I never talked about the Electoral College. <laughs> I never showed my beautiful PowerPoint slides. <laughs> but that's what they needed, and that's what they wanted. And their natural conversation led into me talking about the Illinois voting laws, which then led into the rest of the meeting. So it was a good meeting, just nothing like I had planned for twice. <laughs> I'm Mike, Mike Clark. Um, Holly started our chapter um, about a year ago. Uh, you may have noticed there was an election and things happened and quite honestly I've always been the optimist and the extrovert in our relationship and I spent 27 years in the military and I saw everything I believed in our country kind of change and uh, I came, became quite despondent and um, Holly, who's normally not that active in politics, started paying attention. Um, beautiful lady she she says Mike we're gonna do this AMAC thing and I'm like okay so we did and she did it so she stood up the uh, she set up the chapter and she goes Mike you need to be the delegate so I am now the delegate um, the point the point of this is um, I stewed for about a year but it's a lot easier to do than it is to stew I feel so much better now that we're active in making a change in our country at a at a very low level but it all has to start local and we all have to do that. But, but without Holly and people like Holly, and like all of you out here, getting involved and being uncomfortable and putting yourself out there, none of this is gonna change. Everything starts local. So, okay, we were supposed to talk about certain things and I gotta get back to that. Um, <laughs> she talks about flexibility. Um, you also have to talk about, uh, one of the things we found is, is focus. Um, Action, AMAC action, someone said it here. Our first meeting, the guys are like, we wanna go march on the school district and <laughs> walk down the street. And I'm like, we can start talking about things first. We get to figure out what we have to do. So they wanna have action, but they have to be things that are actually attainable and legal. So what we've done is focused on things we can do locally that are within the law that will make a difference and are attainable. Um, so we focused on um, what we can do with local elections. I'm, I'm an election judge now for our local county. Um, <laughs> but it's a pretty honest county, so it'll be pretty easy. Holly's <laughs> running for county board. Whoa! Oh. Um, so that's kind of new. And then um, the other piece of this, what else are we doing? <laughs> I, Hello? We, um, we had people express an interest in doing something, but we couldn't get volunteers to say exactly what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting a committee on election integrity. Mike's starting a committee on a parallel economy. And one of our friends is starting a committee um, to look into our local school boards. There so, um, you know, we put it out there and we're gonna do it. So now we're just waiting for volunteers to um, yep. trickle we're, in to help us out. And we're not gonna wait. We're just gonna, we're just gonna push and it's, it's gonna be fine. In the short time we've done this, we've managed to meet with Congressman Rodney Davis, uh, Congresswoman Mary Miller, and a host of local Republicans at the, uh, the county level um, Republican dinners. Sure. Um, it's really interesting watching, you know, we're not from that area. I'm military, we moved in there. We, we move. We move into this area, we walk into these, these meetings and they just look 
<laughs> and they go, you're not from here, are you? <laughs> but you know, honestly, that can actually work, work for you as opposed to against you. So we've only done this for a few months. Mm -hmm. It's been really exciting and I'm really happy to be here to hear all of your stories. It's been really quite inspirational, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> nice, Holly. <laughs> and we're, we're getting ready to wrap this up here. Um, <laughs> do we have the slide up on the, oh, I guess, just, there we go. The Advocate Advisory Committee. Right now, I'm, I'm introducing this new initiative. Jen had mentioned it a little bit earlier. It's an advocate-driven forum for feedback and to improve our grassroots. If you're in the room and you're on the committee, uh, please stand up. Because what their job is, Scott? is <laughs> what their job is is best practices and to strategize yep. on challenges and opportunities that you all are seeing. And we're discussing experiences as advocates. So our desire is to clearly define our procedures, guidelines, and structures and how to better run the ground game for the advocates. And it's interesting to me how many people that are volunteers that want to volunteer to be volunteer. So thank you to the eight or nine yeah. people that came up to me after today that said they'd like to be on this also oh, great. on the next one. So, but I thank the, this first group of 10 people and um, terms are two years and so we will be turning it you know, over so there'll be more opportunities for other. You can email me if you'd like to do this. So I'm just gonna finish up here right now. Uh, friends, you just have no idea how it feels like to come to the end of another brilliantly written an impeccably orchestrated presentation, right? Well, guys? we have no idea. You have no idea, no idea. Just remember, it can be a lot of fun, especially if you have a partner you can recruit to work with you on this. You know us a little bit better now. We're here to help, but I do want you to ask you and, and remember that as we're growing, we do have to tighten some of our processes, so please be patient and work with us. We coordinate, you do all the work. So just remember one last thing. We've all been talking about President Reagan today. All great change in America begins at the dinner table. So let's have a great evening tonight and a great dinner tonight.